morning, our Turning Point family. Good Friday morning. Today is the 20th, and so a lot of you know that tomorrow is March 21st, which is World Down Syndrome Day. And I know for sure, at least that all you second graders were really looking forward to our special Down Syndrome Chapel that we do every year. But since none of us can be together, I thought that maybe we could pretend to be together here and do a little video and a little experiment. So I've got Reagan here and Clarice, and I, I think Reed's gonna pretend like he's helping. And we're all gonna have a little bit of fun together, okay? So I thought that this time, I would try and show you guys a little bit of what it's like to be Reagan. Because I know we've talked about in years previous, uh, some of the things that come along with Down syndrome, but I thought it would be kind of fun to see if you could feel what that's like for a little while, especially those of you who are really good friends with Reagan in her class and stuff. Okay, so this is going to be this is going to be our experiment. So we've talked about in the past, and you guys can can shout at the TV right now what you know are some things that are are challenges with Down syndrome, and I know some of you are probably going to say hearing because Reagan wears a hearing aid, right? And you guys also know that sometimes it's a little under, hard to understand what she says, right? You know what I'm talking about, yeah? Okay, um, and then we've also talked about how sometimes it's hard to learn as quickly. It's, it's a little bit harder to process information. So I have a couple of little experiments for you guys to try so that you can kind of understand what it's like to be Reagan, okay? So this is what we're gonna do first. The first thing we're gonna do, we have, Katie has some marshmallows here. So if you have marshmallows at home right now, try this. And if you don't have any marshmallows, kind of think of anything that's kind of like a marshmallow that you can do this with. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to get a marshmallow. All right. Get a marshmallow. Get a marshmallow. Reagan can have a marshmallow too because marshmallows are yummy. A yummy, a yummy fun experiment. Okay. Now put the marshmallow in your mouth, but don't eat it. Just put it in your mouth. Now try to talk. Oh. Okay. When you try to talk, with one mouth in your mouth. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder for people to understand you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? And you have to work extra hard to make your words really clear. Yeah. Right? See, so Katie, try and say something with that marshmallow in your mouth. Hello. Now try and make it clearer. Hello. There you go. See how much more work it takes to make your words clear enough for somebody else to understand when you have a marshmallow in your mouth? Well, that's kind of how the inside of Reagan's mouth and brain works. It makes it hard for her to make her words super clear. You can eat that marshmallow now, Reagan. <laughs> you can eat it. <laughs> Silly girl. So, when you don't, when you meet somebody like Reagan, shh, buddy, that you don't completely understand their words, remember, what it's like to try and talk with a marshmallow in your mouth. You can always ask them to repeat it or slow down or be more clear, but be patient because it's not easy. Okay, now my next experiment for you guys is the hard to hear part, okay? So what I want you guys to do, because when you have hearing trouble like what Reagan has, it's kind of like trying to hear underwater. Have you guys ever been, you know, sw in the summertime swimming underwater and you can kind of hear sounds but you can't really tell what they are? So when you have hearing problems like what Reagan has, it's kind of like trying to hear underwater. Okay, so this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to put your hands over your ears. Now wait just a second because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do before you put your hands over your ears, okay? I'm going to tell, show you what it's like to take a spelling test when you can't hear the sounds of the words very well, okay? So, put your hands over your ears. Yes, just like that. Okay. Now I'm gonna talk really loud to start with, and I'm gonna give you some spelling words. The way your teacher normally gives them, and I want you to see if you can tell what words they are. Can you spell bear? Can you spell here? Can you spell ball? Okay, now take your hands off your ears. That was a little harder to know what words 
I was saying, wasn't it? I said bear, here, and ball. But I bet it was kind of hard to tell what letters the beginning letters of those words were, wasn't it? So that's a little bit of an idea of what it's like to try and do, for example, a spelling test. Or if you're talking to Reagan sometime and she doesn't seem to understand what you're saying, it might be because she's not hearing your words. So make sure you look at her so that she can see your lips. So you can, she can see if you're saying b bear or d daddy or something like that. Okay, my last experiment is so that you guys understand a little bit of what it's like to be inside Reagan's brain. Okay, so I'm going to give you a math problem. I know some of you kindergartners, this might be a little hard for you, but you kind of get the idea, okay? So here's your math problem. 3 plus 3 plus 2. It equals 8, right? And I bet that wasn't very hard for you, right? For Reagan, she can do that math problem, but it takes a little bit longer for her brain to hear the numbers and do the math. It's just a little slower, okay? So to her, when I say that math problem, or when your teacher says it, it's kind of like if the teacher said this. Three plus five plus seven minus 10 times two. Did you get that? Not really, right? That was really hard. Do you even remember all the numbers I said? And can you do all of those really that fast? Not so much. That's kind of what it's like for Reagan, so she has to do her work just a little bit slower so that her brain can hear all the parts and work them out. But she can still do all the same things you can do, just a little bit slower. Now, those are three examples of things that can come along with Down syndrome. But we also know, we've talked about in the past, how there's some pretty amazing things, right? You guys are all Reagan's friend. You know some of the amazing things about her. She loves to, what? Dance, sing. She's a good friend, right? I so, that. I also want to point out, though, that sometimes the things that seem hard or bad can actually are good, too. That's a good thing to remember right now, because right now, we can't be together at school, right? We can't play with each other or give each other hugs, and that seems bad. But if we look, we can find good in it. So, for example, for Reagan, these, these things, hearing and talking and doing things slower, they seem like they might be bad or hard. But have you ever worked really hard at something, something that was hard to do? Something that was really, really hard to do, and you worked really, really hard to accomplish it. Oh, it was so hard. But how did you feel when you did it, when you finally succeeded at it? Right? Didn't it feel so good? Weren't you so excited? Doesn't it feel nice to accomplish something that was hard? Well, for you, 3 plus 3 plus 2 equals 8 might not be hard. But for Reagan, it's harder. It's so, so when she does it, yeah. she gets that really amazing, good feeling. So she gets all of that, yay, I did something hard, a lot, because a lot of things are hard. Now that is a blessing in disguise, right? And I want you guys to think about that right now when you have to kind of be away from all your friends and you can't go do the fun things you used to do. But there is so much right here at home that we can do that, that we might forget about all the time when we're busy being at school or doing other things. So kind of when you think of how you miss your friends or how this is hard, think about how hard things always have a blessing. Now tomorrow is actually World Down Syndrome Day. So I want to invite all of you guys to wear your blue and yellow. See, we're all wearing our blue and yellow Down Syndrome colors. I'm sorry that I don't have anything special to give you guys all this year because we can't be together. I was gonna give you guys all marshmallows, but alas, you don't. All, you can't all come yeah. over here to my backyard, or I would. But 
I would love it if you guys would still, still wear your blue and yellow. And I know you can't go anywhere in it, but it would be so awesome if you wore your blue and yellow and if you took a picture and you posted it up on Bloom so that we could all share how we're celebrating World Down Syndrome Day together and how we're celebrating challenges that have right sides, because that's what we're all doing right now, isn't it? Okay, and if you think of something that's hard, but good, share that too, in honor of what Down Syndrome can teach us. I hope that this was fun, our experiment was fun for you guys, and I can't wait to see you all again.